the virus in this protected environment inside the barrel of a syringe, which is relatively long-lived and proportional to the volume of blood that's left. If someone is presented with a choice of syringes with a low dead volume and a high dead volume, then from the standpoint of, of reducing the risk of, of, of creating a contaminated needle or using a contaminated needle that had been previously used by somebody else, you would want to use a, a, a syringe with as little as dead space as possible. Different types of syringe have different amounts of blood left in them after injection. So insulin type syringes uh, with a fixed needle uh, where the needle is made to fit on have, have a, a dead space of only about 13 microliters. So the amount of blood that is left in uh, an insulin syringe after it's been used is tiny. Um, places that use insulin syringes tend to have much lower levels of, of HIV than places which use detachable needles uh, that fit onto uh, standard Lewis slip syringes because as you can see there's a gap between the end of the plunger and the tip of the syringe which can be filled with blood, typically about 90 microliters of, of blood. Most drug users in places where we're experiencing epidemics use bigger syringes or they prefer detachable needles and so you're not going to get them to use um, a one mil syringe with a fixed needle. And, but the, the low dead space detachable needles provide an option for countries where people use two mil or five mil syringes. They may, may not work so well with, with 10 mil syringes or, or great big syringes, but most, most injectors around the world probably don't need more than like a five mil syringe to, for their actual injection, I would say. And it's not just about syringe sharing. There's also the issue of that uh, many times people come with their own syringes to injection episodes, but somebody is in charge of making up the drug. And if that person is making up the drug, dissolving the drug, is using a contaminated syringe, the other person in that injection episode receives some, some portion of what was in that other person's syringe. And they may have thought they each had clean or they each had their own syringe and they weren't sharing, but in fact, something from one person's syringe went into the body of another person. And certainly in that case, again, you'd like for it to be as, as little possibility for contamination as possible. Now, we've shown that you can disinfect or remove virus from syringes by cleaning with bleach, other disinfectants, water, even water several rinses will get rid of HIV and hepatitis C from syringes, but it takes much more water and many more rinses to do it if there's more volume of blood to start with. And if there's more volume of blood to start with, it is also true that bleaching is less effective. What our studies uh, with both HIV and hepatitis have shown is that the virus survives longer when there's more blood retained in a syringe. So, and in fact, it's an appreciable difference. Uh, for HIV, it's a difference between 21 days before the virus is completely eliminated of infectiousness in the, in the low dead space syringes with a fixed needle, and six weeks with the uh, high dead space. And not only is, does it take longer for the virus to be eliminated just by natural decay, but the percentage of syringes that remain potentially infectious is much higher with, uh, when there's more volume of blood retained in a syringe. And that makes perfect sense with what we know about the virology of HIV. And we see a similar thing with hepatitis C, and the difference there is even greater. That hepatitis C in the low dead space syringes with a fixed needle, uh, we could not recover virus after two weeks, but with the, with the larger volumes, we could recover hepatitis C for as long as nine weeks. What we've done is developed a uh, 
a, a Lewis slip needle which has a spike down the middle which fits um, into the syringe and displaces all the blood and that reduces the dead space by about 50%. So the, there's half as much blood um, uh, left in a total dose uh, needle and syringe combination. From a drug user's perspective, that, that dead space wastes drug. And so if you eliminate it, you get more of your drug. So I don't know why any drug user wouldn't want to reduce the dead space so they could get more of their drug. Also, um, when drug users prepare drugs that they buy together, they often do it after they dissolve them in, in water, and then they split the liquid, and they use a syringe to measure it and divide it. and if you use a high dead space syringe and you don't take into account the dead space, then one drug user gets more than their share and the other one gets less than their share of it. So, so there's several advantages in addition to reducing probably the possibility of HIV or hepatitis C infection. The ideal syringe to be using when you're injecting drugs is a syringe with as low, low as dead space as possible and those are the syringes, typically with fixed cannula. But if, but those only exist in one, and in some cases, two cc, and certainly half cc, syringes. For people who are injecting drugs where they need larger volumes, they have to, almost have to use a detachable needle that has a, that has a void volume, a high dead space. It is very good that several different companies are are responding to the need in different ways by making uh, syringe needle combinations where that dead space, that void volume is minimized. And um, we're looking forward to running some tests to see just how effective the minimization of dead space is in terms of influencing durability of the virus and recovery of, of the virus, both HIV and hepatitis C from these syringes. They, they, the important thing is they provide a low dead space alternative that should be good for probably 90% of the drug users in the world, I would say.